Hi, a very warm welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. Um, today, continuing with my sort of series of uh, videos that I'm making on the lead up to the coronation of King Charles uh, uh, on Saturday. So this is the third in the series. Um, the first one I did on the Marks and Spencer's commissioned uh, train royal train set, which had the Duchess of Sutherland in there. Obviously, a coronation class logo in itself. Uh, today, I'm moving on to this lovely set here which is again a coronation class loco this is the city of chester uh released in 2010 as this train pack uh, it's got the uh the streamlining on, on this loco absolutely beautiful these are magnificent absolutely magnificent locos and this set is linked to the artist uh, barry j freeman as you can see on here um, uh, <laughs> being very cynical i i can imagine sort of the product release in in hornby you know there's uh, what can we do to sell more trains well we need to include some plates uh, or we need to include some stamps or we need to include some art to sell more trains and you know the the boss in there says yeah we'll do all of those so um very cynically this one contains some art um but actually it's a really really nice set and the art in it is absolutely superb so this set itself was released in 2010 um it was in the 2010 catalog and it uh, was the uh, sort of cover story, if you like, the, uh, let's call it the centre spread with this, this particular set with the City of Chester in there and the artwork by uh, Mr Freeman. Um, and in 2010 there were three sets released, all of a thousand uh, units each, one of the A4, one of the uh, Princess Coronation and uh, Bullet Pacific. Um, so I, they must have been very popular because then in 2011 Leading with another Princess Coronation class, the Duchess of Sutherland, at this time unstreamlined. Um, again, another three packs released. Um, you can see them there. So, uh, very popular, um, and as I say, limited to a thousand units each. Came with the uh, piece of art that you see down the bottom here. It's a, it's a print, obviously, not the original. Um, and uh, a certificate. Uh, so Barry J. Freeman was from Northampton. He spent time in the Navy and then was an electrical engineer for a number of years. Um, and then became an art teacher uh, before retiring. Uh, when he retired, he focused on his art and he's particularly painted uh, um, naval vessels, but also steam engines, became quite famous for his steam engines. I guess a bit like uh, David Shepherd, but uh, not with the uh, loco ownership that uh, obviously David Shepherd had. I found an article online that said that uh, one of his paintings sold just very shortly after his death at the age of 80 in 2017 for five thousand pounds and to be fair until sort of researching or, or seeing this set i hadn't uh, really appreciated his art before but it is extremely detailed and it's very good good so um yeah do do have a look online so on to the princess coronation streamlined variant so uh absolutely stunning and i'm sure you'll be aware but for those who aren't you can actually see a streamlined uh, coronation class at the National Railway Museum in York. Um, it's the Duchess of Hamilton, um, and although the streamlined casing is a modern reproduction, it was done in 2009. Um, it's beautiful, it really is beautiful, and the, the, the gold down the side really, really sets it off. Um, and, uh, you know, just to uh, can only imagine what it must have been like to see one of these sort of thundering through the countryside. Um, absolutely beautiful thing and it's sitting there in the middle of the museum where it was last time I went I put some pictures in um, with its sort of support coach behind it looking fantastic if you are going to the National Railway Museum please do check online there's a lot of updates going on in the building um, as they convert the museum over to a coffee shop no that's not right sorry um, yeah joking apart they you know obviously the coffee shop brings in revenue to the museum but they are updating the collection and uh, yeah moving a lot of things around and uh, making some more space for um, activities and events and things so just before I move off with the Duchess of Hamilton um, it does actually follow the same story as the Duchess of Sutherland we reviewed the other day in that um, it was based at uh, a Butlins camp um, when it came out when it was uh, retired it made its way to Butlins as an attraction there in uh, Minehead this one um, and uh, yeah it uh, followed the same story that uh, these big old express locos ended up as sort of a, for want of a better word climbing frames in Butlins and uh, hence why we've got them today but as I say this is now pride of position it stands next to the Mallard in the uh, in the Great Hall or at least it did at the Great Hall of the National Railway Museum 
So as always, I'm going to take this over to the bench. Let's have a look through. So there's two third-class coaches and a third-class brake coach as well, all with the gold livery on them. So uh, they, you know, it does look like a really nice set. So let's take it over to the bench and let's unbox it and have a look what's in there. Right, just before we get into the train pack, I'm just going to jump back into the catalogue here. And um, as you can see, it's R2907, Days of Red and Gold, train pack limited to a 1,000. And it says down here, Barry J. Freeman only saw one streamlined coronation, and this was when he was a young boy eager train spotting one after sunny afternoon. However, the image remained with him, and when he was asked to create a painting depicting the city of Chester in the LMS-lined Crimson Lake livery under a full head of steam as it tackled the long climb up Sharp Summit, he jumped at the chance. And then the other thing in here that I just wanted to quickly show you is I do have a price list, as always. So on here, the limited editions, we can see the Days of Freeman red and gold train pack had a retail price of £200 in 2010. Not sure what they're selling for now, but uh, I think they have gone down a little bit in value. Anyway, in the front of the box, you can see the, the loco. You can see the three coaches. So we've got our two third-class coaches and our brake, brake wagon. Um, and it says down here that you get uh, train pack the days of red and gold by Barry J. Freeman, LMS Princess Coronation class, as I just said, two third class corridor coaches and a corridor brake coach and a numbered certificate. On the back of the pack, a little bit more information um, also about the other, other sets in the range um, and the information I've just read out to you is repeated there. So let's slide this open. Right, we'll look at the uh, certificate and picture first. They come in this uh, cardboard sleeve. Let's just open this up and I'll slide these out. So we get some operating instructions, which are just the sort of standard Hornby information. Operating instructions here. Uh, nothing particularly of, uh, to note on there. How to remove the loco body, taking off the front wheel truck. Yeah, nothing that important there. Here's the uh, certificate of authentication. Um, this is number 701 of 1000 for whatever that's worth. You know, I know Hornby uh, very keen with their certificates at one time, but uh, they really don't mean a great deal to me. But uh, there you go, put that to one side. And this is the uh, print of the painting. I'm just going to move it around so that the light's not shining off of it. I, I really do like like his art. I mean, um, you know, the detail is amazing. You can see the way the light is reflecting off of the top of the, the loco. It is really, really nice. Yeah, very well done. Right, and then let's have a look inside the train pack. So... One Coronation Class Loco, let's see if we can lift this out without breaking it. I could take that block out to start with. Alright, let's lift the Loco out. A little bit of uh, polystyrene caught inside the wheels. Alright, let's, uh, let's have a look round it. So, you can see the way the handles are beautifully mounted onto the uh, body. What a stunning loco, look at that. Look at the front of that. Beautiful, beautiful. Sprung buffers in here. You can see the uh, vacuum pipe mounted on there, very fragile on the little ladder. Um, shame the cab is not painted up. That would have been a nice touch just to have the, you know, the painting inside there. Now, it's got a fixed truck on this and it is a plastic chassis, which is a little bit um, disappointing. But, um, and uh, it is um, motor mounted inside the uh, the front body here. But other than that, I mean, looking around it, you know, there's no unsightly knit lines on top of the body. The, uh, the livery looks absolutely spot on. Obviously I'll take some detailed pictures of this in a moment and uh, you'll have a good look at it. You can see the whistles on top are all individually mounted. It does look very, very nice, very nice indeed. So just pop that to one side. Let's pull out the tender. Right, so the tender, 
looking at this looks very nice i mean you can see the, the streamlining carrying on past the back end of the uh, the tender to sort of merge into the car the coaches again separately fitted handrails look at the detailing along the bottom here looks lovely it does look really really nice again it's a shame they just don't pick out some of the features in these uh you know in the in the molding here it wouldn't take a lot but uh, generally nice metal wheels on there it's not particularly heavy tender um but um yeah quite nice quite nice and the livery looks really good with the uh the gold down the side there in lms okay let's have a look at the coaches so this is one of the uh the third class class corridor coach really really nice really nice I can't read what that says on the windows, but I'm sure we'll get a close up on that in a minute. Obviously with the LMS on the side and third coach marked either end. Sprung buffers on the coaches, which is nice to see. And I particularly like the the corridors either end, uh, connecting to the, the next coach in the series. And it may not show up on camera, but obviously the interior, you've got the, the corridor running down this side. Um, so you've got, uh, Obviously separate compartments for the seating, which is rather nice. Um, separately fitted parts underneath, which is good to see. Really lovely detailed coach. And uh, the NEM coupling on the end there. Okay, so that's one coach. This is exactly the same. This is our other third class um, corridor coach. Again, absolutely beautiful. I'll just put that to one side because we've looked at that one. And then this one should be the third class brake coach. Very difficult to slide out. There we go. I've just noticed at the ends here, I don't know if you can make out the separately fitted handles on the end there, which is nice touch nice touch and again plenty mounted underneath um yeah they look really beautiful and again with the gold lining running down from the you know the back of the, the tender running through the train really beautiful let's have a look what we've got in in there here Ah, look at these. So, so what we've got in here, we've got alternative couplings for close coupling between coaches, if preferred, and obviously the um, concertina. I don't know what the what they call these bits are, but the sort of coverings that run between the uh, the, the coach ends to uh, you know to allow a corridor to step through. And you can see, I don't know if you can make it out, but the little handrails either side. Um, and there's three of those in there. And then on this side. We've got a set of replacement wheels for the rear truck. Obviously these, with the truck not moving, these are um, unflanged wheels. So they give you a set of flanged wheels in here for display. And then obviously the coupling rods for underneath. Right, let's take this over to the uh, track and uh, let's have a detailed look at it. It really is a stunning loco. Um, absolutely beautiful. Kind of thinking that it may look have more of a presence on the railway if it was in in the gloss, uh, similar to the uh, the real thing in the National Railway Museum. You know, it looks a little bit dull in the in the matte finish that um, this particular model's got. Um, I have spotted the knit line. It's very cleverly disguised as uh, um, a sort of a join in the panels. So there's one on either side of the of the the sort of uh, streamlining just above the top of the boiler. Um, but uh, your eye doesn't go straight to it which is fantastic particularly like uh, the view from the front I mean obviously with the where the uh, the, the, the gold features sort of crescent round the uh, the curvature absolutely beautiful and uh, the additional fitted uh, parts all over the loco from the handles across the uh, the front of the uh, streamlined casing for uh, sort of opening the uh, smoke box door right the way through to the handles either side of the cab and uh, then onto the the back of the tender it uh, you know it's just really really nice and uh, of course you know with the vacuum pipes on there it just sets the model off lovely 
Valve gear looks really, really well presented. Um, I know some a uh, couple of people have commented on uh, sort of the scale of the Valve gear. I, I'm not that up to date on the the detail of the loco, so I can't comment on that. But um, it does look pretty good. The only thing I'd say is with the fixed um, uh, pony truck. You know, when it's running around the track, it does look a little bit odd as the back of the cab sort of swings round. But um, yeah, small price to pay, I think, for such a lovely looking loco. If you've got this far into the video, then uh, I must be doing something right. So if you can spare a moment and uh, subscribe to the channel, you'll be doing me a massive fa favour. Thank you ever so much. The coaches are absolutely stunning. They really are. They're lovely. Um, really beautiful detail on them and uh, with the metal wheels they just uh, look and sound the part. I particularly like the smoking and non-smoking signs in the windows. Um, previously when I had it on the bench I couldn't read what they were, they were too small but um, yeah, zooming in on the detail, absolutely beautiful. Um, and uh, looking inside the coaches, you know, with the uh, with them being a corridor coach you can see the corridor in there. Um, we've also got some uh, some you know some of the windows are actually blanked out for sort of the toilet cubicles um really really nice and as i say you can add the sort of flexible corridor in between the two coaches uh should you so wish um the coronation class of locos were built for the lms which is the london midland and scotland railway and were designed by william stanier these are often confused with the princess royal class but the coronation class including the duchesses were much larger and uh, more powerful. In fact, they were the most powerful loco built in the UK. They ran express, express passenger services from London to Glasgow and included the non-stop service called the Royal Scot and also the uh, Coronation Scot. 39 were produced in total. The first 10 were built in 1937 and streamlined and the rest were either built with or without over the following years. However, in 1946, all of the streamlining was removed um, and production of the locos finally ended in 1948. The demise of the fleet of locos came when the uh, main line between Euston and Crewe was electrified and uh, unfortunately with the size of the loco it was running too close to the power lines um, and um, not being able to use this part of the main route to Scotland, their kind of use uh, disappeared a little bit and uh, with the advent of uh, electrification and diesel by 1962 it was all over. The fleet was scrapped between 1962 and 1964. Three were moved into preservation. We've got the Duchess of Hamilton, the Duchess of Sutherland and the City of Bristol. Well in summary, an absolutely stunning looking loco, absolutely beautiful, looks the part. Um, as I say, I think it probably potentially would look better in a gloss finish rather than the, uh, the matte finish that it's to come with. But having said all that, it is a nightmare of a runner. Um, now my track's not good, I know that, but I've not had a train this bad in quite a long time. Um, it just will not stay on the track, any track. Um, it's so light. Um, there's no, um, it's not traction's the word I want, but there's, you know, the, the, it, it's just bouncing off the track all over the place. 
the front wheel truck is bouncing left to right and just comes off at the tiniest little motion um, and the tender itself is jumping off the track even on a straight without any issues at all so um, I think it's probably due to the uh, the mass of the engine it's a very very light engine it's all plastic um, but it is an absolutely dreadful runner um, which is a shame because it does look really nice coach is um, beautiful beautiful sounding beautiful running but uh, yeah unfortunately the locos really uh, really does let this set down slightly um, yeah, if I just show you the movement here, it's almost like the uh, the gauge of the wheel is, uh, distance is set wrong. Um, maybe it needs some fine adjustment, but um, yeah, as I say, it is it is not uh, not running particularly well. And the same you can see on the tender here. Look at the movement on it, and uh, the slightest little movement, and it's just it's just slipping the rails, um, which is a shame. Which is a shame because it does look beautiful. Anyway, we'll leave that one there. Thank you ever so much for watching, and um, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please do, and um, I'll catch you on the next one.